Satya is asking what is Mithya Bhasa actually and why does it happen? I don't know. It means hallucination, isn't it? Am I right? Can you tell me the English word? Hallucination. Hmm? I said phenomena. It's not clear to me. If you put your question in clear words, probably I will be able to answer it. Because who knows what is the meaning of Mithya Bhasa in your terminology. Mithya means false. Abhas means perception or uh, uh, an illusion. Hello? Yeah, hello. Hello? Hello? Uh, Guruji, I had uh, listened to you earlier and you had said this is Mithya Bhasa, uh, which is called phenomena in English. Uh, experiences, some more experiences, you know. Uh, are they hallucinations actually? That is what I was wondering. Can you give me an example? Seeing things, uh, like when I close my eyes and see things and uh, extraordinary things happening, you know, which I can't really... Uh, like certain experiences, uh, like seeing someone in front of us, and in front of me, um, I had many experiences like this. So, like while sitting for meditation, when I close my eyes, there is another world going happening. Uh, you know, I can see people, real life happening. Nothing affects me. It's like a different world. Hmm. I won't call them mithya basa. I won't call them. Yes, phenomena. Yes. So, this is just one example. I have written to you many. You written to me many. Unfortunately, I, I don't re- yeah. cannot recall right now. But yeah, uh, uh, once I had asked a question in the satsang, and you asked me to write uh, write to you uh, about what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, so I wrote to you. That was my first communication. Uh, so I had asked. I had given my. I mean, a lot of details about that. So you said Mr. Basa, but I wasn't very clear about it. So I thought that. Uh, I'll ask you now. Okay, okay, okay. So, in the particulars, I'll need to go and revisit your emails and all. So, if you are not still clear, you can email me again. Because, you see, very, very subjective. What is happening to people? What are they seeing? What are they hearing? It's totally subjective. So, there is no general reply. So, what can I say? All these phenomena, they are non-physical in nature. Non-physical phenomena. In ordinary language, we call them visions. Even the hearing, it, yeah. can, it can present in the form of hearing, voices, visions. So why do visions happen? Well, your non-physical senses are activating in the waking state. That is the reason. What has happened because of the knowledge or your spiritual growth or whatever path you are following, kundalini, whatever, the non-phys- non-physical senses which are mostly dormant and they come up in the other states, they become active in the waking state. Now there is whatever they are sensing in the universal memory, for whatever reason, who knows, that is overlapped on our waking uh, experience, waking state perception. And it looks like that somebody is standing in front of me. But that is being sensed by the non-physical sense. Uh, and uh, the your room is being sensed by our physical senses. Now there is overlap and that is called an hallucination. But it's not a really hallucination, it's a vision, we say. It's a vision. And uh, sometimes the vision replaces our waking scenery and then it is very, it's called a vivid vision. It is like a movie that plays for a few seconds and goes away. Oh, I saw this, I heard this. So, tuning out of the waking into the projected state happens. You, It looks like you are gifted or it looks like you have a natural ability to change your state into projected state in the during waking. Just like I said, you know, there is no need to do the ritual that I have told in the step number four to get into the projection mode. Why do we do the ritual in the night, three o'clock? <laughs> Why do we do that? Because you are not used to it. It's a training thing. But as soon as you become used to the non-physical, you can go there right now. By going, I mean change the state right now. And the vision will appear in front of you through the non-physical senses. Wherever your tendencies and requirements, desires take you, that will appear in front of you. Or it is from the causal body somewhere in the past, you see. This manifest, these things manifest. So the exactly exact meaning of it will be very subjective that probably even i won't come to know sometimes we come to know sometimes it is a premonition the glimpse of the things that are coming 
many seekers get this ability actually i keep hearing all these things every day <laughs> like they get this ability it looks like a small dream happened in the waking it's not a dream it's a vision so those who worship devi and those who worship all these gods and goddesses they sit in front of the statue the idol and receive visions that is the communication from the devi she is trying to tell you something so you should note it down you should do not inject your own fears and expectations into it be in the receiving pose and receive what she is giving you why is she giving you because you are asking it you see you are sitting in the front of devi worshiping her in the receiving pose what does it mean you are asking for something you are asking for grace you are asking for kripa you are asking for fulfillment of your desires and she is showing you now what to do and mostly i have seen people don't understand they they understand this much that i need to sit in front of this non physical being and receive have you seen how people worship the statues they sit down and they fold their hands the bow down that and they say the stuti which means invocation that i am here to receive ting 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 the ring the bell you know door bell of the non physical and but they don't know what to do with what they have received why is that they don't have a guru that is why so you are receiving something satya is receiving now what is that if you don't have a guru who is in touch with you for a lifetime or few lifetimes it's very difficult to tell so what i'll say is make a diary and note down your visions note down the phenomena mithya bhasa whatever you want to call it the name is not important um start noting it down and uh, as you know i am not too much interested <laughs> for me illusions if they are not connected with your spiritual growth if your understanding if your knowledge uh, i am not interested but you can send them to me no problem at all i'll read it when i read it it is simply a feedback loop to the guru field your past gurus they will receive it through me if you don't want me middleman then you do it yourself sit down pray to the guru field invoke stuti guru mantra say to the guru field that i received this thing now guide me further there will be guides on the other side they will guide you you will say what a crazy thing you are telling me and this is not path of knowledge you see it's gone you you are totally out of path of knowledge here this is tantric path occult now if you are interested in that i know many people are interested do it experiment nothing wrong you won't be harmed experimentation is always encouraged on the path of knowledge if it is removing some kind of darkness some kind of ignorance in you or it is fulfilling your desire to know you see there is a lot to know in the illusion there is nothing to know in the truth nothing to know in the truth is very peaceful silent blissful tremendous activity in the illusion i know many people who will not be interested you see only a dead person will not be interested in the illusion if you have a living body living mind curious mind it is attractive the only thing is don't get lost in it keep your main goal in front of you keep your life goal in front of you do not get too much involved in the phenomena you see you are sitting in front of the devi and the devi is showing you ask her to show you that which can make you grow and as you know this is the tantric path you must promise something in the return do not say that i'll sit in your feet you know my head is on your feet all the time what is the use of that head for the devi she has many heads in her <laughs> necklace as you know <laughs> that that is a symbol that you know lots of causal bodies she is carrying it is total your interpretation only anyway so she does not want another head she wants you to serve her ask for her wish i'll fulfill your wish make me progress she is happy to do that so sit down if you don't like devi invoke the guru field satya is connected to isha isha foundation satya no i am not connected to anything guruji i have done uh, kriya yoga for some time and i have surrendered i mean before coming to advaita i have I was a great fan of Devi, and I always surrendered. I always carried her with me. And I said nothing. I never pray asking for anything. You know, I never ask for anything. I mean, it's been a very, very long time. I ask anything as prayer. I just 
and uh, that was all my practice. And I'm not scared of any of these, uh, any of these visions. Nothing scares me. It's just there. It was there. Of late, I don't, I don't close my eyes and sit down. You know, I used to meditate earlier. Now I have stopped, and it is not there much. But I was a little curious about what is. Uh, I have always been wanting to ask you from that time, but uh, I thought, you know, it's uh, all about illusion. So why ask? It's all an illusion, but hardly matters. There is only illusion. Enjoy it. So it looks like that because of your past practices, the connection is still there. Like I say, you can leave the Devi, but Devi never leaves you. She is interested. She keeps sending. If it, if they are occurring frequently and they are intense and strange, then the connection is alive. Now it's totally your wish. You see, if you are surrendered, no problem. she will keep sending it's mostly <laughs> we should not call it mechanical it's very intelligent process but the we know certain things that you know once the connection is made it cannot be broken the connection is at the causal level so it will look like it is their my thoughts it will look like i am imagining it and it will look like that i am experiencing it i am sad i am crying i am laughing without any control i am shouting and these things are manifestations phenomena so <laughs> it's not you is a devi like in the ordinary language we say the devi comes in your body <laughs> and that scares people but this is what it is so more it surrendered i have actually been thankful uh, guruji i have felt overwhelmed uh, for these experiences uh, you know which i never thought i mean to have this itself i, I felt it was really overwhelming to even have this but i wasn't sure whether i am hallucinating or <clears throat> something else yes 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 you see there is a very fine line between hallucination which is a fault in the mind and the visions how will you know this well those who experience it they know it the hallucination is very weak and meaningless but the vision has seems to be there seems to be a meaning and it's very intense so those who experience it they know it the vision is like almost like seeing a movie hallucination is almost like a thought some kind of fleeting thing so you you will know it by the consistency of it now you must be wondering what to do just like i said she is giving you receive you are surrendered no problem if there is a desire in you to do something about it then only you need to take action otherwise come continue on the path of knowledge it's all okay